sorry. This is yeah, where the nice. brood will be gathering. Yeah. So Brother Don and Susie. My spouse. Nephew Don, uh, taking his usual bows. The thing is Louise Galeon, the love of my life. Oh, my wife is going to find you'll break your things. camera. Man of the hour. Hey, the birthday boy. George Hine, what's he doing here? More of the brood. Seriously, where are you going? She's a camera director. Look at that. Where are you? Hi, uh, good to see you. Yes. Where are you? I promise. I can't find you. Oh, well, there you are. I think you're on. Yes, I am. You've been taking pictures. Oh, here you are. Am I taking pictures? Yeah, you're looking right at me. The light is flashing, so you're definitely taking pictures. Oh, there you are. Now look around the room. No, it's still taking pictures. Hi, Katie. Hey, Katie! Your nose, Dad. I don't know how to make it smaller, though. You didn't cut his head off. You got his nose. Boy, you must look old. <laughs> is it still on? Is Believe it, it or not, this if, is if the it's only blinking, you have to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Hey, it is Howard. That's also the Howard. Is it? Oh, whoops. Bleep that out. <laughs> I didn't mean to swear. Okay. jokes and the occasional pun. I'm going to tell you, he's lived a life that's not totally straight, and there's a couple of tales I want to relate. <laughs> <laughs>
my age, you need a little bit of light to find out what you're doing. <laughs> but not as much light as I had there. I had a lot more time. <laughs> We've had fires out near, near LA that weren't as big as that. <laughs> Get those things out. Well, they're cutting up and serving the cake. Back to Tom. Well, there's a there's a couple of favorites actually that he has told me over the years and I've enjoyed the and I want to share with you tonight. At least one person in the room will be aware of it. Uh, as many of you know, my dad not only raised a family, but during a period of his life he went to school at night while raising the family. And he built a house down on Puritan Road in Fairfield. And uh, it was a time of, uh, let's say, there wasn't a great deal of money to blow. So he had to make do with whatever resources he had, including people that helped build the house. And as probably most of you are familiar, there's a number of houses that are built, especially in the Fairfield area, that don't have full basements, and they have cinders down below, underneath the crawl space. Well, a pile of cinders was dumped in our front yard, and my dad had a policeman friend of his who was a plumber, and he was to hook up the water pipe from the house out to the street, tap it into Bridgeport Hydraulic Company pipe. The day he was doing this, they decided to dump the pile of cinders right in the front yard. Now, my dad couldn't pay these guys, so what he would do is make sure there was plenty of liquid refreshment around. And this particular policeman, who will go unnamed, imbibed a little bit, had a few drinks. And he started digging the trench to put the pipe in from the house out to the street, and after about a dozen or 15 or so, whatever shots, came to the pile of cinders. He went around the pile of cinders, <laughs> got back to the straight line, and went out to the street and hooked it up. And I don't think to this day the hydraulic company is aware that that pipe's been hooked up to the main line up the studio. <laughs> the other little tale is when he was a policeman riding a motorcycle. And he went to visit a friend of his who had a flower shop somewhere where, here where Ralph Gentile had a flower a pharmacy. And he was going to be a wise guy, so he tipped his motorcycle a little to the side, went through the door, and then straightened it out. I'm sure John can verify what happened after that. <laughs> he saw him coming. He made a phone call to the police headquarters and had them broadcast or something over the radio to my father that the sergeant was on his way. Now, here he is in the middle of a flower shop with a police motorcycle, <laughs> big Harley Davidson. And according to what I've heard, he went out that door full tilt Never touch the sides with the handlebar. <laughs> he's had a he's had a good life. He's a hell of a guy. I'm very proud of him. And I got a couple of little things here. I saw this. I live as most of you know down in the San Diego area, right on the Tijuana border. And I was coming back. And if any of you have ever been down there, and I know a couple of you have, you know you're inundated with the Mexicans down there selling you stuff at the border. And I saw this, and I don't know. <laughs> half the man that this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> empty. Right. Ah, it's empty. And this is Dad, in case you start to forget, you don't remember who you are. Oh, yeah. And then uh, this might say it all. <laughs>
Yeah, they're out in the car. They're coming right in. Yeah. For those of you who don't know Dick, this is uh, Dick Slovin. Mine. Uh, <laughs> Tell you what, with your right, story. God, all right. I just want to tell you the card said that sex and alcohol do not mix. So she advised me to drop the alcohol because she knows I don't drink. She will immediately get going on the second. <laughs> Another present delivered personally by Michael. Yes, I know it is. is that going to be all right? Not enough light. Just take it. It's better to waste it than not have it at all. Sure. Yeah. There's Got no it. more it's light. Tilt if you can do it. It's. <laughs> it's very blurry. It's asking me for light. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Nail Day. Dear Don, I'm sorry you missed your 75th birthday. Know that you are remembered and being thought of at this moment. Now, here's some tales that relate to the gang gathered this evening. In August, you came down to Philadelphia to take me, your granddaughter Karen, and her two friends, Donna and Colleen, out to dinner. Well, we had a wonderful evening dropping the gals off to a busy night spot before taking you back to the area. Then you set off for home with instructions for me how to get back to I-95, only one and a half miles from my home. Well, tell the folks there with you that we have a deal. We call each other when we arrive at our destination so the other party won't work. It's three hours from our respective homes to the other. Therefore, three hours later, I received a call saying, I'm home. Little did I know that the great white hunter who's following the moon is still in New Jersey. <laughs> Yours truly didn't find that fact out until I went to your 55th high school reunion and I came back to our table to overhear you relating this tale. Well, now, I found out that there's at least one of your grandchildren to take after you, that being David. Oh, well, there's one in every family. <laughs> and a few friends to the folks celebrating and most of all to you. A very big wish to you for a wonderful birthday and a very ha happy and healthy New Year. See you soon. I love you, Rosemary. i got to tell you what she meant by that. The moon thing won't mean anything unless I do. I left her home, and I-95 was a mile and a half away, but Route 1 was only a half an hour away. I decided to take that to get back to therapy. I went about 10 or 12 miles, and nothing looked familiar, so I decided I better go walk Route 1 and get my way back. I went 10 miles on the exit before I found out that there was no way to get around back the other way. I went off that to another one. Now I'm on a dirt road in the boondock somewhere in New Jersey. I have no idea where I was. But I know from hunting, from Bill telling me, on the way in, the moon had been on my left shoulder. So I went to get back, 
the moon should be on my right shoulder. Well, I went out and I got out to the farmhouse on a dirt road in a very narrow place. It was a light out. And this is now 1.30, quarter to 2 in the morning. I put a knock on the door and asked him how I got back from Connecticut. I thought it was sounding kind of funny, though, but I said, can you tell me how I get to Connecticut? I've been following the moon. <laughs> That's what she meant by that. <laughs> Season's greetings. I assume it's a car. Bit here, you have this through the history of our dogs. And I wrote this for my father, but I wrote it for my brothers too, because they'll they'll enjoy this, I'm sure. Do you remember Super? And how proud we were that Dad was a policeman, and how he directed traffic on Sunday mornings in front of St. Thomas's. Do you remember Smokey? And when Dad worked nights, went to school evenings. And we were told time and time again during the day by mom, shh, your father's sleeping. Do you remember Smudge Pot? And when dad became a lawyer and he passed the bar and he was eligible to practice law. Practice? When was he going to do it for real? <laughs> do you remember Spooky? And the day the pickup truck pulled into the driveway with the three brand new bikes? Do you remember Tuffy? I do. I remember Tuffy. <laughs> and when we moved to Oldfield Road and we had five phones and five bathrooms and just right for five people after only having one of each before. Do you remember Missy? Yes. And all the weddings and few. Uh, the grandchildren, 14 in nine years. Of course you remember Sam and the 50th wedding anniversary. Not many people, uh, married people stay together for 50 years. We were so proud and so sad. And we'll all remember tonight celebrating the best father three kids could ever have. Thanks, Sarah.
here, I'm taking you to a very fine restaurant for your birthday. Maybe next year I'll take you inside. <laughs> Me and Larry. <laughs> that reminds me. <laughs> Will you do me a favor, sir? Just look on the wall up to, no, just beyond that post, and let me know if there are two X's marked on the side there, <laughs> indicating the two steak dinners that a certain <laughs> Eric Trump. <laughs> <laughs> That's 22 years he's owed me the first one. <laughs> well, we're gaining on it, Doc. <laughs> you heard what the card said. <laughs> with, with interest, it's worth a bank. He <laughs> should pick up tonight's tab. Hey, I like that. Hey, I like that too. I'm not going to as far as I was going to go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lucky. Uh, would you take it easy on the paper? I want it back. <laughs> David. Just in case you ever get to be 75, Larry. I'll never make it. <laughs> Sarah. Yes, you will, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm busy. I told you, I told you, dear, we could have gone to a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> this is a golf club bath lunch. <laughs> Tell him to give, it, to give this to him. It's got a golf ball in Both it. Both of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How many times we were out in the golf cart when you turned to me and said, Larry, do me a favor, scratch my back. <laughs> now you got something scratched the back. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Now, By the way, if there are any, any of the rest of you that have some nasty stories to tell about my father, uh, Sarah. Yeah, Joe, right? Now, yes, yes. John, you gotta have a mic, George. Yeah, I can say something. Okay, George, George wants to volunteer. Did you ever hear a Greek who was going to be quiet? <coughs> this is a record that he's been quiet this long. <laughs> you haven't sat at this table. <laughs> well, let me say initially that Don and I go back many years together. I remember very vividly, we went to law school together to Hartford four nights a week. We got out of the car yeah, I had to keep with no going. windows, <laughs> no heat. The worst part about it was we used to run out of gas. <laughs> and going down the winter, running through the snow to buy gas, we were laughing. I thought we were complete idiots. I had immense respect for his perseverance because he was 10 years older than me. I thought, my God, what a hell of a guy. And he's still been a hell of a guy. And to me, that was Don's character, perseverance and steadfastness in life. Hell of a father. Number two, the things I can remember is a very funny story. I used to play golf many years at my club in Farmington. We played one day with my cousin, this big George Poulos. And Don, being a hell of a driver, hit a tremendous ball down the middle of the fairway. And I thought, my God, it's a handicap ball. He'll be on in two. So Don was smiling. I'm smiling. We got to look for his ball. We can't find it. We finally find the ball in the hole where the sprinklers are. And my cousin, that SOB, would not allow him to pick the ball up. They made him hit the ball out of the hole. Remember, Don? Yeah. I'll never forget that. Ball was I told my cousin today. He made the ball out of the hole. <laughs> now, lastly, the last story that I can make out, which is important, Don and I, my cousin, were playing one day in the winter. Don and I were wearing our short sleeve shirts. Remember, buddy? Yeah. Along came yeah, Channel please. 3 from Hartford. And they had us on television. And this guy's wearing fur moss, a fur coat, a hat. Wearing, he says, you know, and Don gave him a lecture about etiquette. I'll never forget that. I thought, that's my buddy. He's always been my buddy. I think he's the greatest guy in the world. And God bless him. They live, they say in Greek, katostisi. That means live to be a hundred. Have a good life. That's all I can say for my friend. Oh, wait, David wants to make a little presentation first. Grandpa, wait a sec. Hold it.
can't read these. I gotta be careful. I gotta get pictures. <laughs> Thank you, David. This one is to Grandpa, from Tom, and Adrian, Kevin, and Katie. And if any of you wondered what I whispered to Katie before, I said, if you ever decide to get rid of Kevin, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, 